to Thee. I need Thee every hour. Stay Thou nearby. Temptations like the flower when Thou Life is funny and people are funny. There's a redneck 
radio station in Portland, Portland, Tennessee, up here. And uh, they play old rock and roll songs, and, uh, and they'll announce any activity you've got. And so I was listening, and the Bee Gees were singing, I Just Want to Be Your Everything. Well, see, they know who they are. In fact, I told Chris this, and he said, who are the Bee Gees, false teachers? <laughs> He'd never heard of the Bee Gees before, believe it or not. That's, that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> never heard of Saturday Night Fever even, have you? No, I didn't even know who they were. And boy, I was famous, short-lived, but what's so funny they just got through singing, I want to be your everything. Everybody knows that song, except him. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then they said, at, at the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, is going to be a revival. Want all of you to prepare to come. That's after the, I want to be your everything. And then they go right, <laughs> right, into, the, uh, right into the Beach Boys, <laughs> little old lady from Pasadena. I just thought, this is hilarious. They'll announce anything, natural revival or your whatever. They got in between two pagan groups, you know. But uh, Chris won't know if the Bee Gees were false teachers. <laughs> Fal falsetto teachers. <laughs> oh, no, but they, but they were falsetto teachers, so. Everybody's heard them know they're singing falsetto. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I just thought it was funny the way they put it on. They just sandwiches it. I think it's. 1270 on the AM dial. I listen to it because it's funny what they do on there. Uh, they don't have any particular format. It's just you want to get on there and pay, they'll let you announce a skating contest somewhere to the skating Why rink. The huh? Oh, they'll announce the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do that right between Elvis and uh, <laughs> Little Richard. I'll tell them I want Elvis and Little Richard to put it right between there. I think it's funny. <laughs> and you can tell they're a country station because they don't have professional announcers. It's like, we well, want you to be sure and go out to this revival. Now, here's this little old lady from Pasadena. <laughs> it's just like, I just started laughing going down the road in the car. That's funny. All right, let me read to you some of our emails. I'm glad we can laugh at this crazy world. Here's some emails. Uh, got an email from South Africa. Good morning, Jim and team. Recently, Pope Francis from the Catholic Church, I figure he's from the Catholic Church, <laughs> made changes to the Lord's Prayer, Our Father. The changes are as follows. Instead of saying, lead us not into temptations, Catholic Catholics will say, do not let us fall into temptation, okay? The Guardian and Fox News report, will you please give us translation from the original scripts? It says, lead us not into parasmas. Parasmas is the word temptation every time you find it in the New Testament. It means the fire and the trial, but you don't begin to pray that until you've gone through a ton of temptation in your life. When the apostles said, Lord, teach us to pray, prayer meaning to bow to the will of God, then they were praying, Lord, we've had, Peter, I know he had many temptations because he always had his foot in his mouth. That was his favorite place to put his foot. <laughs> and uh, so they didn't mean uh, teach us how to ask God for what we want. No, they said, teach us how to bow to your will. And he said, here's how you bow. Pray, Lord, lead me not to temptation. Have you ever found yourself in life subjected to temptation? You say, I don't need to be doing that. Oh, yeah. God help me not to do that. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about when you first start praying, lead me not to temptation. Everybody's going to go into temptation. Every time you find the word Temptation is the word parosmos. It means to be pierced. Uh, did I read all of that? 
Thanks for your blessing, teaching, and all the best to you and your team. Regards, Manus Mall in South Africa. Then Russ Collins writes to us, Question, since when is Sunday the third day from Friday? Am I going to have to explain this again? <laughs> About 12 to 14 times the Bible says that Jesus was raised the third day. The third day. He was not raised the fourth day. And then they had a, a term, synecdoche, S-Y-N-E-C-D-O-C-H-E. Synecdoche meant a part of something was the whole of something. Their day began at 6 o'clock and ended at 6 o'clock. Where did that come from? That comes from the first chapter of Genesis. The evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening began the day. The day did not begin at 12.01 in the morning. You forget that. So from 6 to 6, and at 6 o'clock in the evening began the Sabbath. And then from Jesus was crucified on Friday. The Bible says he was crucified. He was crucified in the 16th chapter of Mark, the 19th chapter of Matthew, that he was crucified on the, the day of preparation. Preparation is the, the word, I can't re recall it. Parascune, I, it, I caught it real quick. Parascune. Para. S K. S C H. S C H. U N. Ada. Ada is feminine gender. They called Friday the mother of the Sabbath. And when Jesus was crucified on Friday, they had to count back. They had to count the entire... Senecdo came in a part as the whole. When he was crucified on Friday, somewhere between 12 and 3, there was darkness from the 6th to the ninth hour. The 6th hour of the daylight day was 12 noon, 3 was, was the ninth hour, and there was darkness from the 6th to the ninth hour. So from when he died, they couldn't count that to the next day. They said under their rules they had to count from 6 o'clock Friday all the way to 6 o'clock Thursday. They had to count that full day when he was crucified on Friday. Friday would be here, here. And then they had to count all the way to Saturday at 6 o'clock, and he arose from the dead on Sunday morning. He didn't even stay in the grave for three days and three nights. There was no, day, no word for days and nights. There was the word. They didn't have a word for day and night, they had the word N-U-C-H-T-H-E-R-O and Nuktheron, which meant a day and a night. And he couldn't have stayed in the grave three full days and three full nights. That would have been 72 hours, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah. Been 72 hours. If he had arose from the dead one billionth of a millisecond, after the 72 hours were over, millisecond, what day would he have resurrected from the dead? The fourth day. He says repeatedly, he was raised the third day. Synecdoche applies there. So when he was crucified on Friday, 
they had to count it all the way back to Thursday the previous day. So that was one day. Friday to Saturday was another day. And then Sunday, e Saturday evening to Sunday evening was another day. And they couldn't count that because it arose that morning, so they counted it synecdoche. He only stayed in the grave part of the day Sunday, part of the day Friday, and a full Saturday, but synecdoche applied. I even got the seconds figured out. All you have to do is multiply 72 times 60 times 60, and that'll give you the amount of seconds. And if it was one second after the 72 hours, he would have resurrected on the fourth day, wouldn't he? He never said that. He said, I'll rise the fourth, the third day is what he said. Now, let's read and see what this guy is saying. All right. Since when is Sunday the third day from Friday? You're very ignorant. If I said I was going on a trip leaving Friday at 3 p.m., if I said I was going to spend the day with Mike, does that mean I'm going to spend 24 hours with him? Synecdo K okay, applies in our daily life, doesn't it? So how long have you been working? Boy, I worked all day long. I worked 12 hours. Well, that's not all day. You got to work 12 hours and 12 hours, 12, 12 days and 12 hours of the day and 12 hours of the night, right? We don't even use it that way. If I said I was going to trip Friday at 3 p.m. and would be gone three days, when would I return? Take your concordance and look up third. And look how many times Jesus said, I will resurrect the third day. I preached on this in great detail. If you're answer, you have to count days like a Jew. Can you do this for me? In Hebrew, Sabbath, Shabbat means seventh day. It does not mean seventh. It means rest. That's how dumb you are. <laughs> it also means rest. Well, thank you for that. It doesn't mean seventh. Lord of the Sabbath, come to me, all who are burdened. I will give you rest for your soul. One note book, prepare the long way on the far side, right first day. You know nothing about Senecdo, K. Okay, Russ. You don't know nothing about the day he rose from the dead. You have to go to Senecdo, K. Okay? That's the only thing that pulls it together. The only thing. Enough said to you. Alex in Massachusetts. Hi, should I be tithing my gross income? I talked to this guy today on my net income. I told him I tithed on the, on the gross. He said, that's good enough for me. What did you tithe when you worked 10% of the net? This would be separate from the needy fund as I always give a flat sum towards that. I'm a novice in this area and seek to basically give more confidently. Thank you, Alex in Massachusetts. He called me today and asked me that question. Uh, YouTube comments. Travis Garrison commented on history sealed by God's mark, Ezekiel and Revelation. To Grace and Truth Ministries, who are the people that have a king image on their right thumb that is in the world now and who are the ones marked with the letter S on each hand. What? You need to write and be more specific. Wendy Mitchell commented on Doctrine of Devils, apostasy, dispensationalism, false doctrine, rapture, last trump. You're missing the main points. Goodness gracious, I don't even think I want to read this. And rambling nonsense about how they believe in monsters. What? <laughs> monsters? I don't even understand it. You must be thinking of the symbolism of revelation. <laughs> Nobody thinks they are actual monsters in this nonsense. I don't have any earthly idea what you're talking about. They do not teach that falling away is after. What? After what? After period. They teach we're seeing it now with things like the Word of Faith movement. I agree with that. 
I do not know any preacher who says the gospel means you can continue in your sins. The Bible says we have an, two verses. 1 John 3 and 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. 1 John 1 and 8, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. How can that be? The inner and the outer man. You don't have any sin in the inner man. But we can't stop sinning, and if God will put us through enough fire over 40 or 50 years, we will come to a low ebb in our sin. Is anybody here not sinning? Can I, somebody raise your hand? We don't have anybody here that don't sin? Well, I guess this fellow does. This Wendy Mitchell. I guess Wendy is a girl. You really do not know what you're talking about. Golly gee whiz. I'm sorry. Uh, you have ignored all the teachings about the actual Jews, not the spiritual Israel. I don't want to read any more your email. I think you're ignorant as the day is long. Truth for the mockers. The apostasy, dispensationalism, false doctrine, rapture, last trump. No reason to stop and waste time here. No rightly dividing the word of truth. Not a place for me. Okay, hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Reuben Robinson commented on Pentecostal tongues is a lie. Gifts of the apostle is not true today. Do you celebrate Passover? That's a weird question. <laughs> when he's answering that, Kerry Court Bain, sound like Kurt Cobain, doesn't it? Uh, commented on errors in the King James Version verified in the Texas Receptus. A mighty King James Bible is the Holy Scriptures in English. If you don't ever learn any more than that, you're not just ignorant, you're stupid. <laughs> there was no English when the Bible was inspired by God 2,000 years ago. English has been in the development for about 1,200 years. That's all. 2,000 years ago, they were speaking Greek some dialect of the Greek, some Latin, and a bunch of other foreign languages, but no English. Lynn, Ray, Lynn Renee Fisher commented, Our mother's Jerusalem, Zion, a tree of life, understanding, wisdom, and more. Pastor Brown, I need to tell you about something I heard you give a sermon on that I don't agree with. Don't get me wrong. I learned a lot watching old videos here, and I think, thank you for the lessons. When you talk about Jesus telling his disciples about the end, you know, woe to women, nursing come down off the rooftop to flee the hills, the abomination of desolation. All of that, it seems very simple and clear to me that he was telling them about the Persians coming in a like flood, destroying the city and temple in 70 AD. That wasn't the Persians. That was the Roman emperor Titus. Actually, it was his father, and he was the general that came in and slaughtered Jerusalem. You preach on that as if it had a future meaning. It does. It was after that conversation when the apostles asked again about the sign of his coming. And the answer was very different. Am I wrong? Yeah. I got about 3,901 messages as of tonight. I've taught on this hundreds of times, and I don't have time to explain it. I like to read the scripture and let it tell me, put myself in the mind of early Christians in an exegesis way, not eisegesis, I understand that, which is how that part of your sermon sounded to me. Well, it's not. I hope this note finds you prosperous and good health. I hope you don't mean that in a charismatic way. All right. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of short ones. I'll mark this and read it later. Um, Diane McKay commented on, this is last Sunday morning, Revelation 4, the 24 elders, golden crowns, the glasses see, the four cherubim, and the, the rest of the title was, this is all found in the Old Testament. Jim, thank you so much. This was absolutely fantastic lesson. You know, I've been 
following you for years, and I love your teaching, but I often find myself jumping around through scriptures trying to follow you when listening to the lesson and end up listening over and over again to glean all your wisdom and teaching in the lesson, which I happily do. I absolutely love the verse-by-verse -verse exegesis of Revelation, chapter 4 in this lesson. I easily followed along and made great notes and learned so much. I will listen again and again, but I do appreciate the verse-by-verse -verse method. Outstanding. Agape and flow. Diane McKay. Thank you, Diane. We appreciate it. Melissa Hesse. Most people are going to hell when they die. That's what I preached on. We have completely turned away from the word of faith, teachings and preachings, including my very much loved Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack is a moron, M-O-R-O-N. Don't watch him give directions how to get to the lake or go down the street and find <laughs> Clover. But my Holy Father would make me sick. I'm 56 and have lost everything but sickness. Well, Andrew can heal you, don't no. he? Either him or Benny Hinn or one of those other charismatic wackos. Charles Caps. Now, there's a Charles Caps that was a preacher, and he died over in, in Arkansas. And uh, he's crazy. I mean, crazy. He says, if you say something enough, it will happen. If you say, well, if he does that again, I could just die. If you keep saying, I could just die, you'll die. That's what Charles Caps says. This is a different Charles Caps. He commented on two witnesses, two olive trees. Two witnesses are not binding and loosing. How can the two be dead in the street and those not putting their bodies in the ground? That's, I've got that on half a dozen messages or more, and you'll have to search that out of all these, and I'll answer it. None, none commented on doctrine of the devil, faith is not wishing. It is dying. I almost corrected you and learned something myself. Matthew 5.22 says, He who calls his brother a fool. So you're in the clear. Joel Osteen is not my brother. I don't know what he's talking about. He's talking, about, he's talking to the blessed ones in Matthew 5. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, as he's talking to blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. That all has a meaning. And when he goes to the blessed ones, and then he says, he's talking to the blessed ones, he's talking about the Pharisees. And he says, if anyone says you, thou fool, for being poor in spirit, being meek, being peacemakers, if they call you a fool for that, they're danger and hell fire. That's what that's talking about. It's not talking about my mother-in-law mother used to say, before she passed away. If you call out a fool, you go to hell. <laughs> That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about if you're poor in spirit and you're meek and you're a peacemaker and you meet all this criteria of the blessed ones, anyone who calls you a fool is danger of hellfire. That's what it's talking about. Reuben Robinson commented on the name and mark of the beast. So 666 is not Nero, no. Enough said. All right, let me give you the announcements. We got, uh, we got a picnic coming up a week from next Saturday, don't we? Uh, that will be all day long down here at Rockland Recreation Center. We hope everybody will come that can and uh, hope you will uh, Bring something to eat. Don't matter what you bring. You stop. If you come from out of town, just stop at Kentucky Fried Chicken or, or go get some of these, uh, Mary calls them crystal armpit boogers. <laughs> you can stop and get some of those. They smell like it, don't they? <laughs> All right. We are, and we'll have our Chili cook out at the same, that'll be, our picnic will be this month, the 29th of June. Is that two weeks from the, 
two weeks from this Saturday. From this Saturday, okay. And Eric will be out there early cooking. So you can come early in the morning and stay all day long till you get tired at 5.36 and then you can go off. And It's funny to me, a lot of people say, let's go get something to eat after <laughs> all this big food. So they go to a restaurant after they eat and uh, I don't understand that. Would somebody explain that to me? <laughs> All right. And uh, we'll have our chili cookout at the same place October the 5th and get ready to come. We're on the TV uh, all over the country. We get emails. That's the ones I read here to you. And uh, we get get these comments from people all over the world, from Africa, from Holland, India, Japan, Germany. We get comments from people everywhere. And uh, we, we're on the internet 24 hours a day. We have about 2,000 of these messages on the internet. And if you watch them, you'll learn. When I teach you something, I teach you what I have learned out of my library. I don't make anything up. For some reason, people think, you can't learn all that much without making some up. No, I don't believe in that. I study a lot. I've done that for the last 40 years. Just every, I carry a book everywhere I go with me, everywhere, to the bathroom to sit and watch the fights, to sit and watch a football game. I read in between, and I'll read. I don't care what I'm watching, where I'm going. I've got a book with me. I don't ever want to quit learning. If you get that idea in your head, you won't quit learning. And there's enough on 3,900 uh, cassettes and and uh, DVDs, there is a ton of information. I watch sometime, I, I watch sometime, I'll go, I don't think I can do that again. It's just the information is pouring out. And I don't know why I've liked information since I was little. I read the, let me tell you something. My father made fun of people who read books and he'd call them educated idiots or got all these titles for them, you know, bookworms. And I was ashamed to read a book till I was a young teenager. So I read the newspaper, everything I could read. I read uh, magazines of all kinds, a Life magazine, Look magazine, that was a popular when I was young. And uh, I'd read popular mechanics, anything I could read without being laughed at. And then I saw a guy, I was in the ninth grade, and I saw a guy going off to the library, and he was really cool. I thought, well, he's cool, and he ain't a bookworm, and he's not a, a crazy kind of guy, and he's popular, and everybody likes him, and looks up to him. I wish I knew who he was so I could call him and say, you don't know how you inspired me to check books out of the library. So I saw he'd check a book out. A day or so later, he'd take it back, check another one out. I thought, if he can do that, I can do that. And I started checking books out, and I read 129 books in high school. Sometimes I'd take a book home in a night and read it that night and take it back. Did you you learn so much. Did you hide them from Marlis? Huh? Did you hide them from your dad? No, my father started getting intimidated because I started talking about things he didn't know anything about. <laughs> and that started happening in my late teens and in my 20s. And I'd say, Jimmy's the smart one in our family. No, I just read like crazy. Read and you will learn. That's the point. I suggest these books, I'm not saying read straight through them. You cannot read straight through life and times of Jesus the Messiah. It's too hard. You can't do it. You read and you got this Herod trying to court the seas at Rome, and then this Herod assassinates this one, another one comes along, 
and the Herods were kings of Israel, but they were of the descendants of Esau, and God's kings have to come out of the tribe of Judah. And you'd be reading along, and I found out the way you read books that you don't know how to read, you go over to the index, you find something, you'll find binding and loosing, look up binding and loosing, and go to the where it's in the book, it'll tell you the page, and read two or three pages before that binding and loosing, two or three pages after, and then you'll know what it's about. And when you do that, with well, your books, after a few years, you're getting to where I, I, I kind of know what's in this book. That's the way you have to read the two Babylons. This has got more information on one page than any book I have ever seen, just on one page. And you can't remember it. You'll be, oh gosh, that's too hard. But you go back to the index and look up Cross of Fire or look up anything like that. And you find out that Israel had a cross of fire, and that came out of uh, that came out of uh, uh, oops, got something bent here. Cross of fire comes out of paganism, and they worshipped a flaming cross in the on Lady Day in the ancient world. I got these out of books. I didn't make this stuff up. And the reason preachers are so stupid, they don't read nothing. They don't read the Bibles. And if you got the cross of fire out of that, and then when you're reading Edersheim's book on the history of Israel, you read the 18th chapter of 1 Kings, and he'll start talking about these priests of Baal, and he said they look quite ridiculous in their tall white pointed hats and their white robes or their white sheets. That's where that comes from. It's not like a mystery. Enough said. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Glenn, would you pray for us? Father, thank you for the truth. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be here and just to sit up under the teaching and learn more about you. Forgive us of our sins and <laughs> open our hearts to this word, God. I just want to ask you, Father, to help us, help us get rid of this uh, this pride, this orge, and do the work of the ministry, and uh, put away self, Father, and put our minds on you, God, and our affections and everything. And thank you for everything, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I don't remember everything I read. I remember a small percentage of what I read. You ought to read a lot to remember a lot. Yeah. Your dad Harley, did, uh, did you ever get him to read any books when you told him it was a good book? Did he My read? father didn't read nothing. He was, he was kind of a redneck, wanting to fight his deacons and wanted to punch him out and cuss people that cut him off in traffic. And you said, preacher wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, they do. I've seen him get a two before after one of his deacons. I've seen him curse one from the pulpit and tell him to sit down and shut up. That's what messes people's lives and minds up is preachers that don't study and people say if that's Christianity I don't want it. Let me tell you, if that's Christianity I don't want it either. I tell Dave I understand why the heavy metal musicians don't want, don't want the Christianity of America because if that's Christianity they don't want it well neither do I. And they hate the preachers and they don't know why, and I hate the same preachers, and I know exactly why, because they're lying. And that don't make them believers. They'll get to go to hell with the same preachers they hate. It's, it's no study that makes people what they are. And you say, but you always want to read. No, I don't. 
I make myself read when I don't feel like it. And before you know it, I'm into something. That's the way it works when you read, isn't it, Tracy? When you force yourself to read, you'll be reading stuff that you think, my goodness, I didn't know this was here. Sometimes I just open up a McClinican Strong and start thumbing through it page at a time. And I'll, mar and I'll do this with my books at home, and I'll just put a, just a mark in the book I've got to come back and read that, and I'll flip a few more pages. I need to read this. Reading keeps you from being fooled. You find out what the truth is. All that's wrong with preachers, they're lazy. They are bums. When you watch them and listen to them preach, you know they don't know nothing. A lot of them are rich bums. Huh? A lot of them are rich bums. Yeah, they're rich dumb. They are rich dumb. 